We'd like to greet you in the name of Jesus for the second part of our service. We invite you every Sunday morning, each Sunday morning, if you do not attend anywhere and you're housebound or you just want to tune in to this program, we have a Bible study and a praise service each Sunday morning beginning at 10 a.m. So you are welcome. And uh, you can go to the uh, YouTube and look up House of Hope Prison Ministry. And there you can find the Bible studies and so forth and devotions and, and the like. You can go to the website, House of Hope Prison Ministry, and you can find out what we're about and what we're trying to do for the incarcerated as we try to preach the Word of God. Now we're in the second part of our service, and we are in our Bible study. And I say this each Sunday morning so I can get you stirred up, but I know you brought the textbook. I know you brought your Bible with you to a Bible study. <laughs> would be much use of coming without the Bible, would it? And, yeah. uh, let's get our Bibles out and turn to Ephesians chapter 5, and we're now ready for verse 14. So if my reader would read us verse 14, I would appreciate it. Amen. And the word reads, Wherefore, he said, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. May the Lord bless the reading of his word. And so what we try to do in a Bible study, we try to slow down a little bit. We try to look at every word and every phrase and try to give the definition of words that we're not familiar with so that we can come to understand by the leadership of the Spirit what Paul or whoever the human author that God used in explaining what God has for his children. And so we begin there with the word wherefore in verse 14. Now, this is going to be the introduction. When it says wherefore, we've already learned, it looks back and it summates what's been said, either the verse before it or uh, verses, many verses before it. In this case, Paul is making a summary statement. We've been involved since verse uh, 11 and 12 and 13 into the second negative statement that he has made in chapter 5. And so we are seeing, he said, and have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done in secret. But all things that are reproved are rebuked, are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. So what we've been involved in, and we can back up to the verses before that, he says in verse 8, For we were sometimes darkness, but now ye are light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. So what we're trying to do is learn how we as children of God, as believers, how we are to walk in the light. Now, one of the great benefits of a Bible study is that we have time to break down the verses and outline the chapter. I think personally that expository type preaching or teaching is the best for the people of God. So we can know who the human author is, uh, what he's writing about, who is he writing to, so we can get an idea of what he's discussing when we read the Scripture. Now, it's hard sometimes just to read one verse and ascertain or to discern what the author, by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, is telling the believers. This whole thing, chapter 4, chapter 5, and chapter 6 of Ephesians, we are bringing this to you because our major theme since verse 16 of chapter 4 has been the movement of the house of God in this real world. How are we to act personally? What kind of testimony do we have in our own heart as we are members of the body of Christ? 
And then we begin in verse 25 how we treat others that are in the body of Christ through verse 32. So now we're talking about how do we act, how do we walk on the outside, where we work, where we live every day, outside of the assembly of God. And so in chapter 5 he said, be ye followers of God. That's what we got to do because we are the children of God. And so he said, walk in love. On the other side, he said, we cannot walk in the darkness. Now, there is a verse in chapter 1 of 1 John that I'd like to read you this morning because it is so important that we understand what it means to be in the light, to be a child of God. The Bible said in verse 5 of chapter 1, Reader, would you read 1 John 1 and 5 for us? Amen. And the word reads, This then is the message which we have heard of him and declared unto you that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. Now, our last message, which was last week, we went over the difference between physical light and spiritual light and we referred back to Genesis 1 if you remember that. But God is revelation. Let's do it that way. God is light. God is revelation. And so there is no darkness because he is the truth. There's no error in God. That's why we need to refer back to his manual or his book and not just take what others say, but what does he say? Mm -hmm. We should be more involved in what God says and what man says. Now notice this. Because this goes along with our text today. If we say that we have fellowship with him, do we say that or not? Do we say that we are a believer? If we say we are a believer, walk in darkness, and walk in darkness, we do what? We lie. We're lying. And do not the truth. But if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship. Now notice, one with another, And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Now, I'm not going to go on and try to preach in 1 John, but I'm trying to set the stage for us when he said, wherefore, in our text. He is looking back to all that he said so far. And if the light or Christ dwells in you, then he is speaking to you this morning. Do you understand that? Let's go back to our text. Wherefore, he... Say it. I think that the word of God is inspired by God. It says that in 2 Timothy 3.16. That all scripture is inspired or God breathed of God. And so when he said wherefore, he saith, I believe it is God that is speaking to the church there at Ephesus. Now to whom he's speaking, of course, is not. Now listen carefully. He's not speaking to the unsaved. Because the unsaved cannot uh, wake up themselves. The unsaved cannot arise from the dead. You have to get your mind now on a spiritual application here. We are talking about spiritual matters to spiritual people. Only God has the ability to raise a person that is dead in sin and in trespasses or in trespasses and sins, Ephesians chapter 2 and verse 1. So we're not speaking to the unregenerated today, and you've got to get this on the foundational note. We are speaking to people that are saved, that are believers, but they have gone to sleep. And so he gives us the command. He said, uh, then, he said, awake thou that sleepest. I want you to note the word awake and the word arise. I wish you would circle those two words because there is a difference than being awake in the bed than getting up and walking from your bed. You see that? So we're talking about saints that have gone to sleep and saints that need to be awakened because they're in danger when they are in the works of darkness. And that's what he's talking about. Those that have gone to sleep have come to compromise their belief and their stand in God And so they've gone to sleep. This is how he is described it. They're walking in the works of darkness. 
But I tell you that we, we must admit that it is a reality then <clears throat> that a saved man can walk as the darkness walks. Now, how long God will put up with that, only God knows. Mm. But the problem with people walking in the darkness is this. It happens to them slowly, and it's like they're on a slide, and the slide is not a great incline, but they are slipping daily because they're not walking in the light. They're not doing those things that please God, but that please the flesh. And I'm going to discuss this further as we go into this message. But we need to know that the children of God that are sleeping are those, in my opinion, that have, that's what he's talking about through the whole chapter. If you're a child of light, don't walk in the darkness, right? So those mm -hmm. that have gone asleep, they're those who have gone down that road of little by little being trapped by the philosophy of this world, by the religion of this world, and that's a biggie right there for believers. Because just because somebody names the name of Jesus and talks about miracles doesn't mean that they know God. It doesn't mean Whoa. that they really are a believer in Christ or that they are in Christ. And so we see that the first thing you need to do is to be awake. Now, what is involved in being awake? Well, number one is, cast off the work of darkness. Number two is to put on the armor of light. You can't just be a hearer of the word, but you must be what, James says? James 1, 2, a doer of the word of God. So the first point this morning in my outline is you must be reminded if you are going to be awake, awakened out of your compromising state. Let's go to Romans 13, reader. Let's go to Romans 13, and I want you to read one verse at a time for me, beginning with verse 11, please. Romans 13, Amen. and verse Amen. 11, one verse at a time. Amen. And the word reads, And that, knowing the time, that now it is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is our salvation nearer than when we believed. Okay, so number one, Paul is right, the right human author of Romans, uh, the book of Romans. And he's saying the first thing we need to do when we talk about being awake, our, our awakening, is to be reminded that our salvation is nearer than we believe. Now, I've told you about this before. Paul wrote to real people in the first century. And they were facing the judgment of God upon Jerusalem, and it happened in 70 A.D. They were facing God doing away with the, the signs of the Old Covenant, the temple, the priesthood, the ceremonialism, all of that was going to be done away with because if you read Matthew 24, and it happened, he said, there's not one stone going to be left on another in the city of Jerusalem. And so what they were doing, Paul was saying, you need to wake up. Judgment is coming, and you need to wake up, and they believe that Christ was soon to come. Now read verse 12. Amen, and the word reads, The night is for spent. The day is at hand. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness, and let us put on the among of light. Okay, so that's what I said in the beginning, dealing with our verse, what it means to awake is to be reminded of where we are at this moment in time. Paul mm -hmm. said, the day is far spent, and what we need to do, is the day is at hand rather, the, t the night is far spent, and the day is at hand rather. Let us therefore cast off the works of darkness. That's what we're talking about. You either have the fruit of the Spirit or the works of darkness. You need to know that, believer. We either are following Christ in love, mercy, and uh, joy, and peace, and long-suffering, and gentleness, and goodness, and faith, and meekness, and temperance, Galatians 5, 22, 23, 
or we're in Galatians 5.19, the works of the flesh. There's 17 of them beginning with adultery. Mm -hmm. Mm. And fornication, he names them all. So he said, what we need to do is wake up. Uh, the night is far spent, the day as it has. And I began to research that when I was doing my study, and I looked at Malachi chapter 4, 5, and 6. It's called the dreadful day of the Lord. And in Matthew 24 and Luke 21, the judgment of the Lord on the city of Jerusalem, the rebellious Jews, destruction of the temple, and so forth and so on. It's also in Jeremiah called Jacob's trouble, the day of Jacob's trouble. And in Revelation chapter 1, he said that the unveiling of the glory of God was soon to be. And so what these people were, were facing, they were facing a terrible moment of tribulation that Peter talked about, which came from the Emperor Nero. He crucified them on the road to Rome, and they burned on the cross. He would tar them up and light them up, and they were like torches all the way into the city of Rome. So he said the night is far spent. The day, the day of judgment is at hand. What do we got to do when we face the judgment of God? Now I tell you people in the United States need to listen to me this morning. The people of God today better wake up. Amen. We are in a terrible, terrible shape in America today because the people of God have gone asleep. Mm -hmm. mm. Amen. There is no difference in the church anymore than the world. Mm. I don't care which one you go to, not many, if any, that can be noted there is a difference in the way they dress, in the music they play, and the focus of their ministry. Mm. Now listen carefully, I say these things in love, but we are at a time that we need to wake up for the night is spent, the day is at hand. Let us therefore do what? <laughs> Cast off mm -hmm. the work of darkness. Why do we have them anyway? Because we have been lulled to sleep. That's mm -hmm. why. And let us put on the armor of light. What is he talking about, mm -hmm. the armor of light? Well, first, let's read the next verse and we'll find out what we're talking about, the works of darkness. Read or read verse 13. Amen. And the word reads, let us walk honestly as in the day, not in rotting or drunkenness, not in chamber or wantonness, not in strife or envy. Now, I don't think I have to explain that, but Paul say in verse 13, he's naming the works of darkness in a general state. Let us walk honestly as in the day. He said, not in rioting or drunkenness. And by the way, I looked up that word for rioting. It's singing songs while you're drunk. Worldly things. Worldly situations. Laughing, jesting, foolish talking. Rioting and drunkenness, not in chambering, that is, not in adultery, not in uh, wantonness or fornication. That's what those words mean. Not in strife, not in uh, contention or quarrels, he said. But what? Read verse 14 for us. Amen, and the word reads, but put, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Okay, so let's, what, let's establish one thing. We're talking about something internal in our mind, right? Amen. It all begins in our mind. Our mouth speaks what's in our heart, right? And so Paul mm -hmm. said, but here is the answer. Not only do we need to be reminded of the situation we're living in. Don't forget my outline now. I made them with ours so we can remember. We've got to be reminded of who we are, where we are, and where we live and what's happening, what's going on. Now, secondly, he said, we need to repent. We need to put on the Lord Jesus. Now, to put on the Lord Jesus, what does that remind you of that we studied in Ephesians 4 and 22, 23, and 24? Let's go back there. Hold your place in Romans. What does that remind you of when you say put on the Lord? That means if you put on something, you have to take something off, right? Amen. We've got to take off our old clothes and put on our new, clean clothes, right? 
Read that for me, reader, verse 22. Amen. And the word reads that ye put off concerning the formal conversation the old man which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. So we know the King James used the word conversation means manner of behavior. We got to put out old man's behavior because why? He's corrupt. Amen. So we got to put him off if we're going to put on something, right? Read verse Amen. 23. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Mm-hmm. Only if you read Romans 12 and 2, we're not going there, but be not conformed to this world, but be renewed uh, in your mind. You see, you've got to be, uh, the Word of God is what renews us. The Spirit of God teaching us the Word of God. We need to Amen. be in the Word of God. Yeah. And so yeah. then thirdly, let's read verse 24. And the word reads, and that ye put on, the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true honestness. So Holiness, I'm sorry. Get, yes. And so there we are. We're either going to have the ways of the old man, which are corrupt, according to the seed for lust, or we're going to put on the ways of the new man, created after God, in true holiness and righteousness, or righteousness and true holiness. Do you follow me? There's mm-hmm. not but two ways. You're either in the light or you're in the darkness. Are you with me? Mm -hmm. And so we're either putting off the old man, renewing a spirit of our mind, and putting on the new man, or we're just getting into the old man. Now, this is also explained in Galatians 5.24. Let's go to Galatians 5.24 over a couple of books. Let's go to Galatians chapter 5.24. Amen. Read that for us. And the word reads, and they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affection and lust. Now look at that carefully. And they that are Christ. Somebody said, well, I, I know when I believed. I know when I said a little prayer. I know when I went down front and I know now I'm saved. And they're really not saved at all. You know how I know? Because you shall know them by their fruits. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Amen. They can say anything. It's not. I don't care what they say. It's what relationship you have with Christ and how you live because of that relationship. Yes. Are you following? And yes. they that are Christ have done what? It's no if, maybe, or but about it. You see, church, we're always making allowances and adding to the Word of God. Why? Sure. Because we're hearing this trash on the radio, on YouTube, and everywhere, and they're saying things that are not in the Word of God. Mm-hmm. It says uh, they have crucified, I think we understand that word, the flesh with the affection and love. Look at verse uh, 5 of Colossians chapter 3, reader. Colossians 3, 5. Amen. I mean, we, we're kidding ourselves now if we're not going to take the Word of God. This is a Bible study. We're going to look at the Word of God. Amen. In the Word, we mortify, therefore, your members, which are upon the earth, fornication, uncleanness, uh, inordinate affection, evil conspiracy, and coverage with which is out of it. Adultery. Yeah, there's some big, there's some big words. Let me, let me read for it. Mortify therefore your members which are on the earth, fornication, uncleanness, inordinate affection, evil concupiscence, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Man. For which things sake the wrath of God cometh on the children of disobedience, in the which you also walk sometime when you lived in them. But now what? Read verse eight, reader. But now ye also put off all these anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthiness, communication out of your mouth. Lie not one another, seeing that you have put on what? Put off the old man with his deeds, and have put on the new man, verse 10, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. So you see what we're doing here this morning? 
We are repeating. We're putting off the old man, Paul said. It's time. It's right now. You've got to get ready. It's coming. You've got to put on the Lord Jesus Christ. Why? Make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof. Amen. Now that's why I brought to you 2 Corinthians 6, 17. Wherefore, come out from among them, and be ye separate, saith the Lord, and touch not the unclean thing, and yes. I will receive you. Yes. Now that's point number two. Do we have it? Remind, be reminded, and to repent. How do we repent? We actually put off the ways of the old man and put on the ways of the new man. Why? That we not fulfill the lust. Now you are, you are really misguided if you don't think as a believer that the old man is still not in you. <laughs> and that you're susceptible to the flesh as long as we're in this body. You need to read your Bible. You need to read Romans 6. You need to find out, am I a servant of righteousness or am I a servant of unrighteousness? We need to understand Romans 7, verse 14 through 24. Paul said, I do the things I would not, the things I would not I do, because sin dwelleth in my flesh. Amen. Yes. There's two laws in you. There's the law of sin and the law of God. Yes. As to the inward man, the law of God, we serve God. But the outward man, the flesh, the lust, wants to serve the flesh, wants to serve lust. And so, yes. even though we've been made free by the spirit of life from the law of sin and death, we still have to deal with the old man, and that's the test we have Every day, that's the battlefield in the back. Now, number three. Yes. There must be a response. Let's go back to our text in Ephesians, please. So, wherefore, we're children of the light, not of darkness. Then, therefore, we need to do what? We need to wake up. Thou that sleepest, those that are just sleeping and just, it doesn't matter, you know, that's what they say, and it let them live and let this be. It's not about them. It's about you and what you're going to do. Now, third, to respond. And arise from the dead. So to awake is to be reminded, to be conscious. But to arise means that you have come up out from this spiritual death. You know, the leaven leaveneth the whole love, right? Right. It's very dangerous for the child of God to be around spiritually dead sinners all day long and all night. Because I'm going to tell you something, it's infectious and it's dangerous. Mm. And it brings no compromise in the child of God. Yeah. Let me tell you this, sleepiness will also bring on the chastisement of God on unconfessed sin. I also know, dear brother and sister, I'm human like you are, living this life. It's hard for a child of God to stand up in our society and say, I'm going to stand for truth. You know why it's hard? Because it makes you separate from the herd. In 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 13, the Bible said, and I preached on this Thursday night at the prison, if we live a godly life, we shall suffer persecution. That's what Paul said. And Jesus said, if they hated me in John 15 and 18, they will hate you. Mm -hmm. And so really it's easier for us to be secret disciples, right? Mm -hmm. it's, re it's easier for us to keep our scriptural beliefs to ourselves. But there are times, and listen to me carefully this morning, there are times such as in Daniel 3 and Daniel 6, when Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego had to make a stand for their belief in God. Amen. Daniel had to make a stand that he loved God more than he did uh, the political scene that he was working in. Amen. And so what Paul is saying in our text, wake up, stand up for the truth. It's time to stop making provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust there are, stand up, be a good soldier of Jesus Christ, and be not entangled in the affairs of this life in Second Timothy chapter 2. You can read about that. Yeah. Now, what about us today? What about us today? 
I think it is time in the 21st century for the believers to stand in the gap. Mm -hmm. Now, Paul and them were facing a destruction of Jerusalem and a hard time. Like never had been seen on the earth, a tribulation. You in America have never seen anybody attached to a cross and set on fire. Amen. Mm -hmm. Just admit it, we've never in America, we've never been uh, uh, put to that test for our Christianity, for what we believe. The Bible makes known that the Bible is real today as it was yesterday, as far as the principles that are being taught by the Apostle Paul. It includes our body, our soul, and our spirit. Yes. That's why I talk about the five gates. We've got to be ready to guard our eyes, to guard our ears, to guard our touch, to guard our taste, guard our smell. Mm -hmm. We have got to be ready to present our bodies holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. Yeah. We've got to be ready to take our mind and take every vain imagination and thought and bring it into obedience unto Christ. Second Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 5. Yes. We've got to be ready because we're a temple of God in 1 Corinthians 6 and 19 and 20 to glorify God in our body and in our spirit. Amen. Now, number four. This is the reward. I don't know if you put down those points, but I wish you would. This is the reward. Now, let's look at our text. Wherefore, he saith, awake. Now, that sleep us. Wake up. The night is spent. It's time to get up. We, the day is here. We're ready to, to suffer for the name of Christ, Paul was telling them. And arise, that means you can't be a hearer. You've got to be what? A doer of the word. Doer. Arise from those that are spiritually dead. Don't live there anymore. And notice the reward. And Christ shall give thee what? Light. Light. This is the promise that he makes. I'm going to give for every one of you that wake up out of the, your sleep and arise from the dead, get away from those people and, and don't fellowship with them. I'm going to reveal to you light. Yes. Mm -hmm. Now what will light do? He says in verse 13, it'll make manifest, it'll reprove, it'll rebuke the works of darkness. So what's going to happen when God gives us light? He gives us Revelation. Amen? He gives us, number two, encouragement. He gives us supply. He gives us provision. He gives us peace. He gives us power. He gives us all of those things. And also, He will give us a way of escape. Reader, let's go to 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 13. I think sometimes we think God is dead. We get saved and we don't, we don't see God anymore. Oh, yeah. Those that are in communion with God, feel Him 24-7. Amen. First Corinthians Amen. 10 and 13, please. Amen. And the word reads, There has no temptation taken you with such as is common to man. But God is faithful who will not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. Now, that, that, <clears throat> that's what Paul is teaching. <clears throat> if, if, if we will separate from this world, if we will give our heart, our mind, our body, everything to God, and be the glorious temple that we should be. You see, there's nothing can overtake us like that. Are you with me, church? Yeah. Mm -hmm. We wonder why we're discouraged. We wonder why we're defeated. We wonder why things are going wrong. Because God is not first in your life. You mm -hmm. say, well, you're telling me now that I'm going to suffer if Christ is first in my life, what does that mean, preacher? Well, it means His grace is sufficient. That's what it means. 
Amen. It means that God will be glorified in death or in life. Yes. You see, that takes total submission to do that. Yeah. That yeah. takes mm-hmm. humility to love God more than self. Yeah. Man will not let go of what he thinks until God becomes first in his life. Mm-hmm. And I want to make this bold statement to you. There is no way that you're going to have more revelation just because you listen to 20 preachers on YouTube and just because you've read 20 books and you've got 20 degrees. That's right. I'm talking about educational degrees. That is not the gift and the power and the authority of the Holy Ghost in you. Amen. That's right. Because they are basing their standard on men and vain is the help of man, Psalm 108, 11. Mm-hmm. David yeah. cried out, give us help in time of trouble. For vain is the help of man. Some men yeah. will trust in chariots and horses. I will remember the name of the Lord my God. Yes. Now, let's, let's see if we can make conclusion. The deal is, you as a child of God, really, are you a child of God? You have to decide, am I a believer or not? Am I a child of the darkness or am I a child of the light? There is no way you can read Ephesians chapter 5 and tell me that you can walk in darkness and say that you're a child of God. Mm-hmm. So we have to make up our mind what exactly are we and where do we live? You see, what what is so sad that many people today want to say they know God and then when things don't come like the Word of God says, then they think they accuse God and the preacher or somebody else. Something's wrong. It's never the Yeah. But what I'm trying to do as a Bible teacher and as a pastor is try to lead men to go to the Word of God and not to the Word of men. Mm -hmm. If we want the promises to be real in our life, if we want the blessings of God, if we want the light of God, if we want deliverance in time of trouble, Paul said, wake up. The night is gone. The day is here. The day is at hand. Put off the works of darkness. Put off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. I don't know, but the month of March, I'm going to have devotions for the whole month of March on each one of the pieces of the armor of God as described in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 10 through 18. If you're interested, look up the devotions on YouTube. They're about 10 minutes long. I'm going to take each piece and give some generalizations and see thought about the armor of life. Now, I want to make this statement. I'm going to make two sermons out of this. We don't have time to investigate it this morning. But I want you to listen carefully. I think in America, it's time for the children of God to stand up. Amen. That is, arise from the dead. Yes. Don't live where the dead people live. Live where the live people live. Yes. Live in the power of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> don't grieve the Holy Spirit the way we live but let there be joy the joy of the Lord as we are overcomers in this life yeah. Yeah. people have been defeated so long and believe that's what's normal that they've learned to live with it mm. well they have to go get their pills to do it you know they have to go get their, yeah. their drugs they have to get their mind all hopped up they have to do something to get their alcohol or whatever they got to have but they've learned to live mm. with it. Mm. I'm telling you, child of God, we do not have to live with it. But we do mm. have to come out from the darkness. Mm. We do have to be doers of the Word of God. Mm. Now, for next week, I'm going to make this statement now, and I'll try to give some light to it next week. Christ is not the problem. Amen. The problem is the rebellious believer. Mm-hmm. I almost hate to use the word rebellious believer because it's incongruent. 
it doesn't match. It's not equal. You follow me? Mm-hmm. We are not to be rebellious if we are believers. Does yeah. that make sense to you? Amen. Mm-hmm. I challenge you this week to read Ephesians 5 one more time and see where you... Let me tell you something. Somebody said, oh, I know God. Well, how do you know you know God? What you need to do is get alone in your secret life and see if you're walking in the light or walking in the darkness. That's what you need to do. Where nobody can see. Nobody knows what your inner thoughts are. You need to line that up with Ephesians 5 and then talk to me about knowing God. Mm -hmm. I want you to pray for me next week because it's going to be very eye-opening. Some of you may even be offended. But I'm going to try to do it in meekness. There's a reason that there's a problem in the believer's life. In my life. In your life. All of our lives. Mm -hmm. The believer today has been conditioned. Now listen carefully. And I am going to stop. The believer today has, on on the most part, has been conditioned. You hear that word? Conditioned or brainwashed by the new card doctrine of the religious world of the 21st century. Not to receive any of the following. I'm going to go over how we have been brainwashed into going to sleep and not walking in the power and demonstration of the Spirit of God. Amen. Now, not everybody can hear this. And I understand that not all the people that go to church I'll understand what I'm going to preach next week. They may not have understood today. Mm-hmm. They may not want to understand because they like and they pet their sin. Mm-hmm. But I have to warn you, if you are a true believer and you're living like the darkness, there is a day coming that you will pay the penalty. Mm-hmm. You mm-hmm. will receive the judgment of God somewhere. Hmm. Because he said, be not deceived, God is not mocked in Galatians chapter 6. Whatever seed you sow, you shall also reap. If you sow as the flesh, you're going to reap corruption. If you sow as the spirit, you're going to reap life everlasting. That's right. That is, you're going to reap abundant life in this life and in the life to come. I'm trying to get people to live the abundant life, even though the flesh is with them, even though they're in this world and being taunted every day by the TV and music of this world and philosophy and education and all of these things. Mm -hmm. Brethren, we're not of this world. We have been called out of this world. We are children of God, not the children of the government, not the children of man. We're the children of of God. I'm talking about a spiritual thing. Yes. Father, we thank you for this day. Lord, I know this is not a popular message. I know that even believers don't like it sometimes, God. Especially when they've not made Christ their number one in their life. When they're hiding things, God. When they think they're doing them in secret. Or when they have justified them away, God, and saying, God, it doesn't matter to God. People do it all the time. Mm. Lord, help me to help the people of God to get away from God. We need to wake up, God. We need to rise from the dead, God. We need to stand for the name of Jesus regardless of what the outcome will be. And I can't do it, God, unless you help me. Amen. But you promise you will give me life. That is a promise that you made to the people of God in this verse, our text verse. Lord, we will have a way of provision. We will have power, peace. We'll have a way of escape, God. You will be with us, even if we have to be martyrs for the name of Jesus. Yes. God, if we don't stand, who is going to stand, God? Amen. Who is going to stand today and be the salt of the earth and the light of the world, God? Who is going to do that, God? Yes, thank you. Only the people of God, Father. 
Help us to get into our secret place and cry unto God and lay ourselves bare before God and be transparent before God and say, God, search my heart. Try my thoughts, O oh God, and see if there be any wickedness in me, O oh God, and lead me to the way of everlasting. Yeah. Help us to stand, no God, for you. We've got to, God. Yeah. We ask these things in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.